Let's move on to sustaining um, the startup when it moves past the Series B. But we'll get into that when we come back because according to venture capital firm Partech Partners, from 2015 to 2020, the number of African tech startups receiving financial backing grew by 46% annually, six times faster than the global average. But sustaining themselves from Series A to Series B has been a problem. We'll get into sustainability of the startups when we come back. This is Business Edge. Please stay with us. Yeah. Okay, Akimbo. Hello? Okay, yes, I can hear him much better. Sorry, we wanted to test an increase in the audio. Okay. Okay. My guest today on Business Edge, as we look at building Africa's startup ecosystem, is Akimbo Aki Olubade, serial entrepreneur. Akimbo, as we went for a break, I was mentioning the issue of sustainability. Now, research has shown that African startups rarely survive beyond the Series B funding stage. So while we can have a number of startups coming in, having these fantastic ideas to plug uh, the gaps in healthcare and education and finance, they're not able to go much further. And you've already mentioned uh, in terms of management and having the right people in position. But beyond that, why do you think some of these starters are finding it difficult to sustain their activities? Um, so generally, I think we know the general stats, right? You know, about 90% of all startups will ultimately fail. Only about 10% even make it, you know, just as ongoing concerns. Yes. Um, so put that on one side. Um, at the early stages, so going from like your seed round to your series A and then B, you're, you're only looking at about a quarter of startups that even make it that far. Um, then you're saying now to get to the series B and, uh, and, and beyond, um, what's causing or, or why are they not able to, to, to maintain that, 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 that um, going forward? Um, there, there, there are different problems. One is the skill set you require, usually a startup is started by someone who has an idea and a passion um, or a solution to, to something. Um, and that is a certain skill set. Usually it's a technical skill set, um, not necessarily coding, whatever the area it is. It could be manufacturing, it could be engineering, it could be whatever. But it's usually a technical skill set the person has and some technical knowledge about the problem. And they start a business around that, right? Now, as they, they will get their seed round, they're fairly straightforward at that point. But when you now get to a series A um, type stage, you're now talking about bringing in serious um, you know, venture capital investors, um, uh, occasionally, uh, depending on the size of the company, institutional investors. But at, at that point, the size of, the type of management um, skills. skill you require mm. is very different from that technical expertise that you needed to start the company. Okay. Um, it's a different skill set required. And you will some a lot of people will make it past even that by the time you get to series b you've got good cash flows you, you know you've built a decent team around yourself at this point it is very common that the company is now larger than the original management team that set up the company and abroad at this point you would bring in a professional ceo mm -hmm. 
Now, we have cultural differences. So uh, for us, you know, giving up control is very hard, um, especially as uh, given Nigeria, I use Nigeria since that's where, you know, most of our, our knowledge base lies. Um, in Nigeria, a lot of, of money is technically tied to the, the leadership. Mm. Yes, to the leadership of the company. So you giving up your CEO slot is, is hugely um, not liked. Uh, to give an example would be um, Health Plus. I think we all saw the news uh, yes. four months ago. And, you know, what was the fight about? She still had her shares. The issue was, you don't want, you're trying to remove me as CEO. Mm -hmm. um, and losing that control, that power is, is hugely demoralizing, um, you know, um, to someone who's put in their sweat, blood and tears to start a company. Um, but I think as the, as the ecosystem evolves, we're going to see a lot more professional managers being mm -hmm. brought in at these stages. And when that starts to happen, you're going to start seeing the numbers go up. The failure rates will go down okay. because professional management is being brought in um, at, at that stage. Um, another reason why companies don't go usually beyond the, the, the series A or B stage is um, business models now are not uh, necessarily profitable from day one. It can take five years, six years, um, to become profitable. A lot of companies will focus on customer acquisition and getting you know, customers and that uh, their valuation will be based on that. I and mean, look at Facebook and WhatsApp and you know, all, all these sorts of Spotify, all these companies were hugely loss making for many years, but because they were able to acquire uh, customers, the investors were willing to stay along for the ride. Now in Africa, you're acquiring customers, but you have to remember the purchasing power of African customers is much lower than your international um, uh, customers in, in the West or, you know, in a Japan or South Korea, say. So as an investor who's put in, let's say, I don't know, $100,000 um, or half a million dollars, depending on, on what kind of um, round it is, um, you can't tell me that, oh, yes, you have a million customers, but, you know, your average spend of your million customers might be a dollar. Whereas mm -hmm. if I do that same investment in a, the EU, the average purchasing power, the average spend of that, that same customer might be, you know, $50. I'd rather put my money where the customer is going to spend more money. 